I want to give you a quick high level tour of my space and how I use the para method of organizing. So you've probably heard me chat about this before if you aren't familiar with it. Uh, the para method of organizing is basically projects, areas, resources and archives. Uh, it's based on Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain. And so this is the structure that I use for my own projects, for client spaces. Um, I just find it's a really useful way to organize your digital information in a way that really makes sense. It did take me a while to wrap my head around it, but now that I have, my space is so much more organized and I really do recommend it for um, friends, clients, anyone else who is just getting started with Notion. Whether you're using Notion or not, it's actually a really, really useful framework. And I, I have had questions from people asking, well, how do you get started? I've got the para set up, but now what do I do? I think the easiest thing to do is to start by listing out the areas of your life, of your business. So you see here, I have a page called areas that has uh, basically one database that is embedded twice in the same space. Um, I do talk a little bit more about databases in my other videos. I'm not going to go into that here. I just want to really cover the basics of Para here. But essentially, this is the same database, but it's embedded twice and it's got a filter here. So I can see all of my business areas here and then all my personal areas here. Um, so yours are going to look different. Um, you know, you might have very different hobbies, different things that you need to keep track of. And so without even worrying about databases or anything, I would just make a list of your areas. Health and wellness, whatever your hobbies are, um, everyone's, everyone's got finances to deal with, whether it's personal, business, whatever. Yeah, maybe you've got some creative pursuits. Um, things that you're learning, whatever that looks like, just start by outlining them with a quick brain dump. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then within each of these categories, you're probably going to start to notice um, that you've probably got some projects within here. So maybe within health and wellness, you've got a project where you're trying to um, start a new habit or um, you know, we were doing uh, meal prepping and planning for a while. And that was a project was like, figure out what our meal plans are going to look like for the next month. That might be a project. Uh, but I would start with your areas. And then I would do the same thing with a list of projects. Just, and again, I, I wouldn't even worry about what page you're doing it on. I would just start by doing a quick brain dump. And if you follow the para method and you read that article, you'll remember that projects have a defined scope and they have a start and end date. So you're going to want to clarify those as well. If it doesn't have any kind of end date and it's something that you're always responsible for, it's probably an area and not a project. Resources, I won't worry about too much just yet either. I think the most important thing as you're getting started is, is establishing your projects. I think that's really going to help your space come together. Um, so you might have clients that you manage, Client A, Client B, okay, and then um, maybe you have house projects like renovate the kitchen, make a family budget might be a project. So anything that has multiple steps to it, multiple tasks, maybe it's probably not something that's going to get done in a day. It's going to have multiple components that are made up of tasks. I want you to outline every single one of those with your, just um, with a quick brain dump. So start there first. And then once you've got your projects listed out here, you can select them all and you can hit command option nine, or you can say, turn into page. And then each of these now has their own page, which is it's fine, just a good start. And then you're going to do the same thing with these areas. Command option nine. Um, and what I like to do, I like to create databases out of these. And then I like to begin to relate these tasks. So um, one thing I do is I create a notes database. So if I open this up, I'm going to create a simple table and I'm going to add some URLs so that when I'm surfing the web, I can save this information here. Oh, let's make that a URL. And um, I like to add a summary too. 
whenever I clip and save something new. Uh, we can add more detail later, but let's just add a couple things there so you can get a sense of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I've got these areas of my life here. I've got these projects I'm responsible for, some resources here. Um, I also know that there's going to be a number of tasks that I'm going to have to do that are associated with these projects. I have another video on um, the importance and power of a master task database. Now, depending on your business type, you may not want to combine tasks across your different projects. And so there are many different ways that you can set this up. But at the very least, you're going to want to start with some kind of task database. I would do that as a table. And uh, generally speaking, I like to give those emojis too, just so you can remember what those are. So let's put in let's put in a couple tasks. I would say do do a brain dump the same as you did with your areas and projects. I would do um, just a bit of a quick sweep in terms of all of the things you can think of that are uh, pressing that you're responsible for, and I would just get those out of your head. And I would start assigning these um, some properties. So I know tasks, generally speaking, they're going to have a due date. They might have a status and a type. Let's make that a multi-select. And so maybe that's um, in progress, completed, waiting. Sometimes you have to wait on other people for certain tasks to be done. So let's give those a couple each of those a different status. Um, and depending if you're working by yourself or with other people, you might want to add people to your database here. So assigning it, I'll assign that to myself. Let's say that's due tomorrow. So I'm starting to get a sense of all the areas that I have, the projects, the tasks, and um, what I'm going to want to do is move these into a table. So all of these different projects I've got on the go, I'm going to drag them into a table. You can delete any of those here. So this is my projects database. And I can give these a tag. I can similarly give these a different type. And one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these projects to the tasks below. So if I open this up, there's not a ton of properties here. But what I want to do is relate this client project to the tasks below. I've got a lot of tasks here because I have a lot of test databases. And that allows me to pull up those tasks that I just created. So let's say those two tasks are related to client A. Those get stored in there. And you'll see those appear here. So those are related project. And now I can start to see that that data is starting to get connected in a, a more easy to see way. I like to do a Kanban view and I like to organize this by status. So you can see now I can see that these are associated with client A and I can, I can see in progress completed waiting and this one hasn't been assigned yet, I can drag that here and that's going to associate it with in progress. I can adjust these properties. I don't need to see the status because I can see it in the top there. And project is good, tags and dates, great. And I can similarly do that here where I can associate certain tasks with certain clients and even certain budgets. Obviously, this is all up to personal preference in terms of how you like to view this. You can see there's a couple different uh, types here. So I like to say client work, business is more like internal projects, courses. So I can drag these clients in here. Those are client projects. Um, and then maybe household projects. And I can say make the family budget and renovate the kitchen are going to be household projects. If I add a new one here, new course, I can open that up and you'll see that it has the tag of courses because it's in this Kanban board. So you can start to see now we've got these tasks, projects, and areas. 
Um, this is what it looks like in my space. So these are my projects. I like to organize them by clients, business, course, personal. And I can also view these by status, active, ongoing, on hold, perspective. But this is generally, the master view here is generally speaking by type. And this helps me get a sense of how many clients do I have on the go at any one time? What's my area of focus? And I, I try to limit the amount of work in progress that I have. Um, and this can help you, I think, start to get a sense of how many commitments are actually on your plate. I think it's really, really important to make your work visible as much as possible and to limit that work in progress. So the more you have a sense of what is going on, the better your chances of not over committing. I think we tend to overcommit because we have a lot that we're carrying in our heads and we're not really making it visible. So it's really important to make these dashboards and to make these pages that really, really capture everything that you've committed to. So areas are, again, they're sort of like the topics of my life and business, organized by, again, business here, personal here, and at any point I can click into one of these. So for example, if I click on Notion, you can see Notion is an area. I have many tags associated with this area. Here are all the projects related to this area. Um, you'll also notice most things get an emoji with the Notion icon. Um, here's all the calendar events that I have going on, notes, um, and there actually should be a connection to my tasks database. So I'll make sure that that is connected here. There we go. And so I can, I can mention any tasks that are associated with this. So similar here, if I've got, you know, write, write a new newsletter, I can add that. And I've got uh, task templates. So things that you do over and over again, you can create templates for that. So I'm gonna say that's an okie dokie task and I wanna assign that to today. Um, let's do it tomorrow actually. Um, but today is gonna make it appear in my uh, daily journal, uh, which again, I go into in other areas, but I really wanted to give you a sense of kind of how I work with para in general. So almost anything that I need that is related to Notion, I can find in here through one click, um, whether it's in the body of this or in these properties. And same with marketing and sales, clients and customers, operations, product services, business finances. I can click in here. I can see projected income. I can see bookkeeping. Um, there's a lot of pages and databases within, within this topic. But it helps me know that almost anything I need is findable in here in one or two clicks. And uh, that is super helpful. So these almost become like mini home pages. So if I open up Girl Guides, for example, I can see um, everything relating to that and its own calendar and, and notes and whatever. So um, this, this is kind of like a home page. There are some pages here that uh, haven't been added to the database. I'm not necessarily sure if they need to be. Um, I reference these often and will share them with clients. But this is really how the projects, areas, and resources all kind of work together. So if I open up, um, if I open up one of these like Notion Office Hours, I can see uh, again the calendar events, resources related to that that I can link into. I can also do a quick search and add other Notion resources, and that's all pulling in from my notes database. Um, which is inside of resources here. So obviously my setup is is pretty complex and there's lots of databases and lots of information happening, but it wasn't always this complex when I started. I just had headings that had, you know, money stuff, finances, whatever, and I would just have pages underneath there. So it doesn't have to be, um, you don't have to start with the databases if that's overwhelming, but at the very least, even if it's, post-it notes and, and pen on paper, just doing a brain dump of all of the areas of your life. Uh, generally speaking, your projects are gonna relate to an area. Um, so my projects here relate to my business. Um, often some of these projects relate to Notion, this relates to household and so on and so forth. So um, this is sort of the basic overview of how I use Para. It's been so, so helpful. I know where everything lives. I know what to do with it. Um, 
I'm going to delete these because I don't actually need all of this just for sample. So just to show you what that looks like, there we go. I can clear that out. Um, at any point, I can create a new area. And I can add new tasks for myself. I can relate it to a project or I can jump into the project and relate it to an area. And uh, that is super helpful for me. And because this is filtered by personal, any new area I create here is going to automatically tag it with personal. Uh, you might again have household or there might be a certain, um, if you are in school and you're studying, you might have areas filtered by school. So just to show you what this looks like, if I copy this link, I can actually paste that again. And I can just change that to a gallery view. And just change up the properties to say, let's do the page cover. And then let's filter this. I can say tags contains whatever I want. I could say that that's um, household or something like that. And only projects that will be related to household can go there. So I can kind of reorganize and restructure these um, in any way that I want. I could drag that into there if I wanted to, give it different properties. Um, but that is really it. It's basically I can access anything I need from one of these entries or I can do it directly from projects as well. Everything is like really tightly interconnected and I can always just mention and pull in resources wherever I need it. Um, See if I can show you another example, like the bedroom office one has some unique um, house specific stuff in there. So this is this actually lives in house areas and I've embedded it in here so I can see it at a glance. And then if I want to add sub projects that only live in this page, I can do that as well. Um, you can see I'm pulling in resources here. I can pull in any tasks related to that. I can relate it to a sprint. I'll go into that in a different video. Um, but yeah, that is basically how I connect up all my projects, areas, resources, and archives so that everything is very readily available. I know exactly what is on my plate. Um, I can also turn on various properties here. So if I want to see which, <laughs> which of these items have tasks, I can turn those on and I can see all sorts of like, oh, wow, that's a lot on my list. Whoa, there's a lot to do. Um, and those things aren't buried. So I think that's really, really important. And that's why uh, we tend to overcommit because we forget what we've already committed to. It's not visible. It's not in front of us. So I hope that helps clarify. Highly recommend. Definitely read the article. It's worth taking the time to wrap your head around. Uh, I resisted Para for a few months, I think, before I finally, finally gave it a chance. And everything kind of clicked into place after I finally uh, you know, read that article about 10 times and really wrapped my head around the difference between even like an area and a resource. And, you know, how did I know if something was just like an ongoing project versus an area? I do think some of that is up to your personal discretion. I do have projects that I've labeled as ongoing. Um, generally speaking, even if I have a client for years and years that's on retainer that doesn't have an end date, I still put them in as a project and I just give them a tag of ongoing and that kind of helps me, again, keep all of my projects in one place. Hope that's helpful. I definitely encourage you to play around with it. Don't be afraid um, to get your hands dirty and know that it's probably going to change over time. My setup looks so different than it did a couple years ago and uh, it probably should change because the more that you use it, the more you realize what's missing and what you need, etc. So again, I use Para, but you'll also see I've got a couple other databases here too. I will go into detail on that in other videos, but at the very, very least, make sure you get yourself a projects database organized and ready and then uh, you're definitely gonna wanna check out the weekly planning because that's where I spend most of my time. I pull the uh, tasks and projects that I need to into my weekly planner so I can see what I'm responsible for on a week to week basis. But it all starts with Para. So definitely check that article out and good luck.